Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we continue our stock plugin series with part two of the Fat Channel. Since the first part of the Fat Channel, there's been some updates to everything that's going on within Studio One 5 and its dynamic processors. The biggest thing is all dynamic processors now have a sidechain input with the Fat Channel included. Let's go ahead and dive into the DAW and we can take a look at what's included in the stock version of the fat channel with its additional compressors and EQs. And we'll touch into a lot of the things that are within the fat channel collection available with your PreSonus sphere subscription. So here we are inside of our session and we have the fat channel pulled up in its stock configuration. Now what we're going to do is start messing around with different compressors and equalizers that are available to us. If you are a member of PreSonus Sphere, you already have the Fat Channel collection available to you. This is also available as an additional purchase if you just purchased Studio One version 5 as a standalone, but all of the PreSonus Sphere members out there have the Fat Channel collection. In order to change which compressor or equalizer you are using, you go to the drop down along the top here. When you hit it, you are given the options that are available to you. If you do not have the Fat Channel Collection, what you will see is the Standard Compressor, the Tube Comp, and the Fat Comp. Then in your EQs, if you don't have the Fat Channel Collection, you will see the Standard, Passive, and Vintage. As you can see though, with the Fat Channel Collection, you do get a lot more options in both EQ and compressors. Let's start with our compressors. So natively, you will have the Tube Comp. The Tube Comp is based on an optical compressor from the 60s, and if you've ever seen a compressor like this, you probably know which one we're talking about. There aren't many controls on the Tube Comp. You have the on and off, which you'll have on all of the compressors within the Fat Channel. Then you'll have the Comp and Limit switch. With this compressor and the compressor it's modeled after, this was a switch that was available where you could just turn it into more of a limiter instead of just a compressor. The gain on the left hand side of the compressor is actually the makeup gain. And the peak reduction control on the right is the input into the compressor. This style compressor had a fixed threshold and the attack and release times were program dependent because of the optical sensor, something that actually saw a light emitting onto it. So if you want more compression, you turn up the amount of peak reduction. And if you need to make up your volume for doing too much reduction, you just go to gain and bring it back up to level match. Let's change this up for a different compressor. Let's go with the FET compressor. Again, something that comes standard with the FAT channel. If you don't have the FAT channel collection, you have this one as well. And the controls should look very familiar to you. This is based on another late 60s, early 70s style compressor. This one, on the other hand, does have an input and output. It has a fixed threshold, but I can adjust the attack and release times as necessary. Now let's take a look at some of the other ones that I like a lot. You have your Brit comp over here, which is based on a British mixing consoles bus compressor. And you can see a lot of the same controls that we were used to seeing on most compressors, our threshold setting. This only had three available ratios. You can also find your attack and release settings here and your makeup gain. Some of the compressors that were modeled within the fat channel didn't have this key filter available to them, but because it's part of the fat channel, they all have them included. Then we also have the classic comp. This is another British style compressor that might look very familiar. And you can see that the controls are different as well. We have our threshold, we have our makeup gain here, we have the ratio available to us, and we have the recovery. The recovery is also the release time. It's the same thing. Next is the Comp 160. And if you've played around with some of the other compressors or have heard some songs and you're wondering what that sound is, there's a good chance it was going through one of these style compressors. And you can see our controls have changed again. We have our threshold here with a below and above. This is just like on the unit that this is modeled after. And you could actually see the LEDs changing when you went over your threshold. Then you have your compression amounts. So this is just like your ratio and your output gain control here. 
Up next, we have the Everest C100. This is another variation on the tube comp. It's a very similar style compressor, but this one actually allows you to adjust your attack and release times, whether it be slow, fast, or in the middle. Same thing for the release. But you can see, here's our makeup gain here and our peak reduction here. Moving on to the next one is the FC670. This is a very famous 50s style compressor made famous by a very famous British band. You may have heard of them. They beat a lot of bugs. Hint, hint. I think you know who I'm talking about. On here, we have our input gain and our threshold. And then time constant was the attack and release times. These had different fixed amounts that you could adjust by selecting a different option. Up next is the PreSonus RC500 compressor. And as we've seen before, a lot of the same controls, threshold, makeup gain, attack, and release times. After that is the Tube CB. Not long ago, the Tube CB was available in the Fat Channel collection, and then it got an update just to make the sonic characteristics of it a little bit better and to adjust some of the controls. I've used the hardware units like this before, and these are really good on lead vocals. You'll see a lot of the same things, our makeup gain here, our threshold, the ratio, attack and release times, but the attack and release is dependent on this control here. In manual mode, the attack and release controls are doing all of the lifting. You put this in as you need them to be. In fixed mode, on the hardware this was designed around, the attack is one millisecond and the release is set to 50 milliseconds. In fixed manual mode, the attack is still fixed, so it's one millisecond. And the release is a combination of the fixed release time and the release time that you have set here. So you can make some adjustments here. And last but not least for just the compressors is the VT1 from PreSonus. You can adjust your attack and release times, the threshold ratio, and your makeup gain. This can be very subtle compression with the lowest ratio of 1.21, but this isn't fixed. I can go right in between 1 to 1 and 1 1.2 to do some very subtle compression. Now let's turn off the compressor and switch over to our equalizers. Inside the equalizers, you have your standard. Included in the stock version of the fat channel is the passive EQ. This is based off of a passive equalizer that was made famous in the 50s. And you can see there are a bunch of controls on here and it can look very confusing. But with this easy breakdown, you can see where all the controls are linked. On the left hand side, you see boost and attenuate. These are linked to the low frequency. So these three controls are for the low frequencies. Yes, it was a different knob to boost the frequencies than it was to cut those frequencies. But you can get some very interesting low end tightness if you actually boost and cut the same frequency. This is a very classic passive EQ style trick. The next few controls that are linked are bandwidth, boost, and high frequency. Bandwidth, as we know in our EQs, is the shape of the bell of that EQ. And boost, obviously, is our additive section of our EQ and the high frequency selector. It's a stepped high frequency choice. The attenuation knob here is actually linked to this control here, and these are frequencies, 5K, 10K, and 20K. If you want to reduce some of the top end, you can adjust how much attenuation is happening to 10K and everything above it in this example. Also, as one of the stock EQs that is available is the Vintage. This is based off the same style consoles and equipment as the Classic Comp, like we were looking at before. So it's a British style EQ. The controls are push button for your low frequency, your mid frequency, and here is your high mid frequency. And then there is a fixed high shelf as well. So if I wanna add a little bit of presence on this vocal, I can go to 3.2 and just push a little bit up here and then add some top end here. Now let's get into some of the EQs that are available in the Fat Channel collection. First up is the Alpine 550 EQ. This is based off of an American style console. First up on the left, you have your bypass button right here for just the EQ. 
Then these two buttons here take the low frequency and high frequencies and turn them into shelving EQs. If you have these off, they are just peak EQs with a fixed bandwidth. Then the last control here, filter, actually puts a high cut and low cut that are fixed frequencies onto this channel as well. They were very high and low. And just play around with this to see what it's doing to your sound. And then this is just a three band EQ with a selectable band. So our low frequencies go from 50 all the way up to 400. Mid goes from 400, 800, 1.5K, and up from there to three and five. Then our top frequencies are selectable over here. Then these knobs, as you can see, low frequency, mid frequency, and high frequency, so we can boost or cut from there. And these are also stepped. If you need 3 dB in your mid frequencies, you have to choose in between two or four. You can't actually get three. Up next is the Baxendahl EQ. This is a famous mix bus EQ, but it can have other applications as well. This is something that I want to mess around with more because I hear great things about Bax style EQs and I just need to dive into this one more. Following that is the PreSonus RC500 EQ where we can see we have three selectable bands up on top and our low frequency and high frequency you can change between a peak style EQ with a fixed bandwidth or a shelving EQ just by hitting these selectors here. Then along bottom is how much you're boosting or cutting. Up next is the Solar 69 EQ, and these were found in consoles that were developed in the UK for only 10 years in the 70s. It actually started in late 1969 and ran until 1979. So not many of these consoles were made, but PreSonus has given you a model of the EQ that was famous from that console. Mixers like Eddie Kramer are known for using these style EQs because they made those boards very famous on some very big records. You may have heard of Jimi Hendrix. Just saying. Next is the Tube EQ, and as you can see, it is from the same company that makes the Tube CB compressor. This is their take on a passive style EQ, something similar to the passive that comes native in the Fat Channel. This is just another company's take on the same style. This one, however, isn't exactly like the passive EQ because the passive EQ only deals with very low frequencies and the top end frequencies, where the tube EQ does have this mid dip and you can select all of the frequencies from here. Then the low peak and high peak are available. So these are boosts on the top and bottom, and the mid is a dip. That's all it does. All it does is cut. Up next is the VT1 from PreSonus, which is a four band EQ with selectable frequencies on the four bands. But the good thing is these are variable frequencies. They're not fixed. So I can go in between two and three K here to really kind of dial this one in. And last but not least is the Vintage 3 band. Again, this is very similar to the native Vintage EQ that comes in the stock fat channel. This one has four bands but fixed EQ points. And the Vintage 3 band has fixed EQ points, but they are selectable and there are more of them. Then you also have the choice of changing the bandwidth with the high Q button here. With high Q, it's a very tight bandwidth, and with it off, it actually stretches it out a little bit more. These EQs are also famous for being able to flick the phase of them as well. And this one has a high shelve cut in it as well. All the way to the right is off, and then as you scroll up, or bring the dial to the left, it starts attenuating the high frequencies and the frequency where it does that starts getting lower and lower. So I'm gonna stick with the Tube CB and the Vintage 3 bands on this lead vocal and very quickly dial in some stuff to show you the versatility, just some of the choices that you have with the Fat Channel Collection. Can't you bless it? Just for show, just you wait and see on a roll. 
So at the end there, I had to throw on a mix tool to actually just balance out the output that I got from doing those boosts on my EQ. I didn't want to skew the post fat channel sound because it was louder. I wanted you to have a fair comparison of the bypassed vocal with the vocal that's been affected by the fat channel using the Tube CB and the Vintage 3 band EQ. So there you have it, a lot of the things that are available within the Fat Channel collection, which is a part of your PreSonus Sphere membership, or available as an outright purchase from PreSonus themselves. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments, and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.